Hi everybody, my name is Curtis Mitch and I'm with the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and welcome back to the St. Paul Center's weekday reflections on the daily mass readings. Today is a beautiful day. It is Holy Thursday, April 1st of the year 2021. And today's gospel reading, which is for the Mass of the Lord's Supper, is the passage that we're familiar with. It is from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. And this is the gospel episode of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. Jesus is in the upper room. He's, he's partaking of a final meal with his disciples before he goes to the cross. And he's also giving them his final instructions, all right, in these last days. And what Jesus realizes, according to this episode, is that Jesus knew that his hour had come. That's a really significant thing in the Gospel of John. All throughout the Gospel, we've been building up to this climactic point, waiting for the hour of Jesus to come. And the hour is the hour when his passion is finally set in motion, when the redemption of the world is about to be accomplished. So there's a certain gravitas, a certain solemnity that attaches to what Jesus is doing here in the upper room, literally just hours before his arrest. So let's read the passage and see what the Lord wants to teach us. First, uh, John chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and that he was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not now know, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. And that is why he said, you are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Now, I want to look at, there's lots we could say about this short little episode. It's really rich in theological and spiritual meaning. But I want to just look at it from three different angles that I think will be helpful to us to understand what this is really all about. The first thing is this. There's a, there's a practical side to Jesus' gesture, what he's doing. What he's doing is he's giving an example for his disciples to follow. And what Jesus is doing is actually f- very unusual, okay, to wash the feet of a house guest with something that a servant did, something that a slave did. Right? Because this was a menial task. The host of the feast could be expected to provide the water and to give instructions to his servants. But it would be unthinkable for the host himself to get down on his knees and to wash the feet of his guests. All right, And yet that's precisely what Jesus does. And Jesus is showing us what he teaches us in other places, and that is that greatness in the kingdom of God is measured by humility 
and service. And so it shows us that Jesus embodies his message, all right? He's not just a man of words, he's a man of action, all right? He teaches us in both word and deed, all right? And this is this is classic way of, of teaching, of, of the way rabbis taught their students, their disciples. You have to model it for them, all right? And not just, and not just mandate it for them. Okay, and that's what Jesus does. He's, a, he's consistent throughout. Unlike the Pharisees, for example, in the Gospels, who they preach one thing, but they practice another. For Jesus, these two things form a unity. He's always practicing what he preaches. And here, he embodies his message to be a servant to others, to lower yourself before others and to serve them. All right, as God would have you serve them. To not only so Jesus not only mandates the Christian way of life, he models it for us. And he tells us that precisely in the last verse, for I have given you an example for you to follow. So there's that practical side to Jesus' gesture. But there's another side as well, the theological side of what Jesus is doing. The foot washing of the disciples, in other words, is actually a preview of the upcoming passion, okay? It's giving us a dramatic pre-enactment of what Jesus will do when he dies and rises again. And we can say this because John is actually picking up on Jesus' own words from earlier in the gospel to describe this sequence of events. And there are two verses in particular to look at. The one is in verse four, where it says that Jesus rose from supper and laid aside his garments. That's a significant thing. And then in verse 12, we had that when he was finished with this act of service, finished washing their feet, he took his garments and resumed his place. So he laid aside his garments and then he took up his garments. There's a reason why John is focusing our attention on these garments of Jesus. And that's because he's describing it in the way that Jesus described his passion. Earlier on in the gospel, in John chapter 10, for example, beginning in verse 17, Jesus says this. He says, for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. And so John is describing this event in a way that evokes that saying of Jesus, that the garments, which are the center of attention here, are being laid aside and then taken up again. It shows us that the garments of Jesus are a sign or a symbol of his sacred humanity, of the life that he is to lay down as he performs an act of service for me and you and for the whole world to cleanse the world of sin. And then he will take that garment up again. He will take his humanity up again in the resurrection. And so we actually have a dramatic preview of what is coming in the gospel story, the death of Jesus, as well as his rising again. And that in the middle of that, what takes place is a cleansing, a purification, a washing of me and you from sin. So there's a theological side as well. There's the practical side. Jesus is setting an example. There's a theological side where this episode is a preview of the passion. There's also a third thing, I think, and that's the sacramental side of what Jesus is doing. Jesus is action of the foot washing of the disciples is related to the ordination of the apostles as priests, priests of the new covenant. Now, in the 16th century, we know from the Council of Trent, the council that was convened to deal with the rise of Protestantism in the 16th century, the Council of Trent said that when Jesus was in the upper room, he instituted not one sacrament, but two sacraments. All right, We know the sacrament of the Eucharist was instituted at the Last Supper, but there's another sacrament as well. And according to the Council of Trent, when Jesus said to his disciples in the words of consecration, do this in remembrance of me, he was consecrating the apostles as the priests of the new covenant. 
Now, what Jesus is doing here today, I think, is connected to that, related to that. And the reason why I say that is this. Because in the Gospel of John, Jesus is many things. One thing that really stands out, though, is that Jesus is a new and greater Moses. In fact, Jesus is identified in John's Gospel, at least implicitly, if not explicitly, as the prophet like Moses. This is a figure that Moses himself prophesied would come back in Deuteronomy chapter 18, where he said that God will raise up a prophet like me from among your brethren, and you will listen to him. You will heed his voice. Jesus is that prophet like Moses. Why is that significant, though? Okay, so Jesus is a new Moses. Because in Leviticus 8, Moses is in charge of installing the first priests of the Old Covenant, of the Mosaic Covenant. And Leviticus 8 tells us that Moses performed the rite of ordination for the first priests of the Old Covenant. Who were they? That was Aaron, his older brother, and Aaron's sons. Aaron and his sons were made the priests of the Old Covenant. And what is the first thing that Moses did as part of the rite of ordination, the rite of installation into this perpetual priesthood? Leviticus 8, chapter uh, chapter 8, verse 6 tells us that Moses washed Aaron and his sons with water. And then he vested them with the outfits, you know, the the priestly vestments that God had specified on Mount Sinai and so forth. And so here we have Jesus as a new Moses in the upper room, not instituting only one sacrament, but a second sacrament as well, the sacrament of holy orders. And by washing the disciples... Jesus is playing that role of Moses, installing his 12 disciples as the first priests of the new covenant, and uh, making them the first to occupy this office, to have the perpetual priesthood that he is instituting by his own new covenant that is formed in his blood. So I think that you've got the practical side to this foot washing. There's a theological side that points us forward to the passion. And there's also this sacramental aspect as well, where Jesus is not just doing his disciples a favor, washing their their feet. He's actually installing them as the priests of the new covenant. Anyway, I hope this reflection was helpful to you. I pray that God blesses you, your family, your day, and the rest of your holy week. And I look forward to seeing you here again next time. Thanks.